Well, you know, Denise, I had an opportunity to catch up with Natasha, yeah. and we talked about what energy matters. And one thing that's happening is people are just kind of like, they don't really know what to do because the weather, we've had hot weather, you've had cold weather, but it's just kind of been all over the place. Yes. But one thing that you shouldn't do is not insulate your home. Oh, yes. And there are some quick and easy tips that you can do that. And they did a partnership with Project One that they do every year. So take a look at this piece. Well, we're here with Natasha Collins. And I have to say, first of all, Happy New Year, because Happy it's been a year since I've seen you. It has not been a year, Max. Well, we're in another year, so Happy yeah. New Year. Happy so as I said, it's been a year since I've seen you. Happy New Year to you, too. It's good to see you. You as well. And it seems like we're at that time of year where we're talking about people saving money. Uh, we, we're always talking about how energy matters with LG&E. Mm -hmm. We're at that point in time where people need to be winterizing their homes and ways that they can cut down on their energy bill. And I know that you have all the answers. So share them with our audience. We're always working on them, aren't we? I'm having all the answers, but you know, we're in winter and it might be a surprise to some because it's been so mild, but it's such a changeable season where you have temperatures. We've had them where they're freezing and below and some temperatures that are higher. So we just wanted to remind people of the resources that are available through LG&E that we can connect them with to help to better manage their energy use and to better manage their energy bills. So that's why we're at the neighborhood place in Fairdale here today mm -hmm. um, at the South Jefferson neighborhood place uh, because Project Warm, our longtime partner who you've done some stories right. with as well, um, has an energy management workshop and it's a great great resource in our community. So when you talk about the energy, the energy management workshop, what are some of the takeaways that you like for the people who attend this to, uh, to leave with? Well, the great thing about the energy management workshops is that it's do it yourself. Okay. It's uh, um, volunteers coming in, experts from Project Warm, telling them simple tips, simple things, small things that they can do around their home to make a difference. Mm -hmm. We know that energy use accounts for as much as 50% of your energy bill. So the heating and cooling of your home accounts for as much as 50% of your energy bill. And so if there are just these small things they can do, it can help them save energy and that in turn helps to save money. And I'm sure that you being in the industry that you're in, people are coming in and they're probably excited because they've gone to some of these workshops and they see the difference when they come in to pay their bills. Absolutely. We all want to be more comfortable in our right. homes, right? Especially this time of year. So it's nice to have the help of such a great community partner. And we are here with Greg. I'm going to mess up your last no, name. Yeah. So I'm going to it's Greg simple. Gapsis. <laughs> and uh, we are here we're talking about Project Warm. And of course, it's that time of year when people are concerned about, you know, the cool air is creeping into the houses and some things that you can do inexpensive but very effective in terms of keeping your house warm so you're going to give us some tips today yeah i mean there are five basic things that we can do to help stay more comfortable mm -hmm. and not lose energy dollars out of our pockets it's as simple as preventing leaks air air infiltration drafts your skin is 98.6 you can just use the back of your hand to find out if it's coming in around the doors, around the windows, things like that. Uh, we offer kits for people that attend the workshop that gives them the materials to caulk and seal leaks. Uh, we also talk about keeping your uh, heating and air conditioning system at maximum efficiency. Simple steps like changing your filter on a regular basis it makes it so they don't have to work harder and longer to get the same result. Uh, we, we talk about thermostat management, okay. that you don't have to heat the entire living space if you're going to be out of the house all day. You can turn it down when you're gone, and you can turn it down in the evening. You actually sleep better in a cold room, a colder room, and a blanket is a lot less expensive than sometimes paying to, to have the thermostat at 80, 80 degrees. And, and keep adjusting your thermostat up and down. So, oh, you, We believe in the stair step method. Right. When you're up getting dressed and bathing and getting breakfast ready in the morning, have it at your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. When you leave the house for the day, knock it down almost 10 degrees. When you get home in the evening, bring it back up. We also talk about you can create zones of comfort. Where a space heater, for a, a little while, uh, can be very practical if your family gathers in a room after dinner to listen to music, read, or watch television. You can have a space heater in that room. Everybody's comfortable, and you don't have to heat the entire structure. So basically, you're learning ways to kind of compartmentalize your heat to, in re reference to where you happen to be in your home. Zone is a smart way to think about it. Uh, dressing in layers. Mm -hmm. Simple. But uh, we're not in the Garden of Eden anymore, <laughs> running around naked in an envelope of hot air. Right. 
in, humans invented clothes. They serve a For purpose. A yeah. They serve a purpose. You know, if you get chilly, put a sweater on. You know, make sure you have a good pair of woolen socks. For the, for the winter months. Well, well, let's look at some of the items that you have here, and you can show us, you know, how to properly use some of these things that we have. This stuff is technically called backer rod. Backer rod. Okay. It's really a foam worm. Okay. You can feel it, and it's it's compressible. What you do is you take the handle of a spoon, the the dull end, the back end, mm -hmm. and if you, here, for example, if you feel cold air infiltrating around a window frame, you take that that spoon and just tuck this in okay. to those spaces and you can stop air infiltration. Uh, for smaller spaces around a window sash, if your window rattles in its frame and it's loose, you know you're going to have air infiltration. So we have this stuff, it's cute, it's called rope caulk. Okay. It's like Play-Doh, it never hardens. Well, it's more like Silly Putty. And you just unroll this stuff and just apply it where you've got air, where you can feel it coming through. Right. Okay. And tuck that in. Okay. A, a quick question: When you are, you know, uh, applying something like this, where you have the complete plastic across the window, does it have to be extremely where it's tight, or are you losing yes. anything if it's loose? We're stopping infiltration, okay. and we're also keeping humidity in the living space. When you have warm air hit a cold pane of glass you can see condensation and it'll start dripping. When we apply plastic, we create an insulative layer on the inside and warm air hits this, it does not condense, but that humidity is kept in the room, the living space. And unlike summer, in the winter, if the humidity is higher, we feel more comfortable. So you've got some other things in, in, your, little, in your box here. Well, here, this oh, is Oh, you've got those right there. Okay, right. Uh, this, if you have an exterior wall, because of sticking uh, uh, construction methods where we have uh, studs, two by four studs with siding on the outside and sheetrock on the inside, mm -hmm. those spaces get cold. And anywhere there's an electrical box, that's an opportunity for air, cold air to infiltrate. Okay. These are genius. You just unscrew the faceplate, put this behind it, and put it back on. You don't go messing in there with your screwdriver down where the wires are. You just delicately put it, and this is a foam gasket behind those to keep cold air from entering into the house through, uh, you know, your electrical okay. circuits and switches. And then I see the handy tape here. Everybody gets a kit and 250 square feet of plastic to do this temporary uh, storm window application. If someone, you know, you're that average consumer, you're trying to regulate your utilities, you know, what's the best way to do that? What, what's a piece of advice coming from an expert like yourself? <laughs> sure. Well, as it pertains to if you're talking about their thermostat, yes. I mean, I think Project Warm had some great tips, but set it and forget it is what we say a lot. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that if you have a programmable thermostat, that you set that at the temperatures that it makes sense for in your home. Think about when people are home, when people are gone to work, and, and when you can save a little bit of energy. So mm -hmm. when you're not home, the house doesn't need to be you know pumping out that heat so you can turn it down and just set it and forget it once you program your thermostat forget about it leave it don't touch it don't crank it up even if you're a little chilly put on some layers uh, and you'll help to save some energy in your home so as you can see it's very simple tips but they can save you money you know what proper insulation I think people generally think of cold weather mm -hmm. and insulated preparing your home but even when it's hot it still keeps your cooling costs down so I would say proper insulation is year-round for year-round savings wouldn't you I would say you are correct. I know you better agree. Right, and I rarely agree with you, but this time you That's are right. correct. <laughs> we'll take another break and back with more right after this.